Okay, we're going to try this, uh, introducing you now slowly to a few of the, more of the tools for each of the things that you've done as you've gone through and done an entire project. Remember, of course, horizontal alignment, surface profile, a profile view, a proposed profile, an assembly, and then a number of assemblies a region broken up into, I'm sorry, a corridor broken up into regions, targets, and right now all we've been using is the target to the surface, but there's a lot of other targets you can use. Make the corridor, make a corridor surface, take that corridor surface and export to triangles, and share that out in some other engine like Max 3DS or even within AutoCAD. So that's this general concept of how you go about doing the civil 3d thing never forgetting of course that you are dealing with the cadastro map at the start topography after that and then vertical and horizontal constraints which you must then deal with both in the plan view or in the profile view which is at one to one in one direction and ten to one in the other in which you place at the point so everything reads station elevation times ten on your profile view. So that said, I'm going to introduce you here to a few real just basic tools as we go through it or, or better tools or I'm not going to call them better because realistically the thought process here um, especially as you're at entry level is going to be much more how to make things work with some of your basic skills of lines and fillets uh, since you're not doing spirals. But you can see how quickly some of this kind of uh, basic constraint math works uh, with a Civil 3D as you think of it as a parametric modeler for, for design corridors. So one of the things that's going to be extremely important is to start naming things. And if you don't name them originally correctly, then going back pretty quickly and changing you notice already that stationing makes a big difference, that you don't have overlapping of stationing. So as you place things at station elevation times 10, things do not screw up. So I'm going to start here without doing it the way I would expect you to do that, which would be to go through and do some lines and fillets. And I'm just going to go through and make a corridor starting with the, the basic way we've talked about, which is tangent to tangent, and then adding in with some of my tools. So I do that by going here going to alignment creation tools and right away giving it an align a name that makes sense. I'm in the northeast quadrant, not northeast quarter, so I'm going to call it northeast road underscore center line and I'm trying to keep somewhat consistent with the capitalization. These are habits they don't have to necessarily be there but using underscores center line beginning at a known place that's not going to overlap 700 plus 00, zero showing this as a proposed alignment, thinking if I've got a site already and eventually we'll get the design criteria as well, but going ahead and thinking about the style that the labels are going to come in in and remembering then to go up and hit OK. It's now going to give me a set of tools that looks very much like the same ones we'll do when we're making a proposed profile alignment layout tools. And I'm going to go right now, just go ahead and add in fixed line two points from near, remembering this is a cadastral line near to there, and I'm going to grab the next point. I'll try to come perpendicular by hitting the F8 key here if it lets me do that, come straight out. I'll turn my F8 key off, specify start point from the end point here, getting another one, specify start point from the end point here, getting another one, specify start point from the end point here, getting another one here, and having now an alignment put in. Now you could have done that a number of ways with fixed lines, but these were actually, as I was doing them, they were kind of fixed line or f fixed lines put in. Now what you can see is how you can go about adding curves a little bit later using the tools, and there's all kinds of different curves to add, but we'll look at this kind of, these concept of floating a free curve fillet and the free curve fillet between entities through points. So first I'm going to do a between two entities in radius. I'm going to grab the first entity and the second entity. 
and I'll give it a telling it it's less than 180 degrees and I'm going to give a radius or a tangent or a chord length or a mid chord but I'll give a, a radius of 200 feet entering that and you see it put that in I can finish that out that's all well and good let me go down here and show you probably something that you'll be using more so if you're doing horizontal constraints and that might be you have your tangents fixed for some reason and you need to pass through a, a point there'd be a great number of reasons why you'd need to do that or more likely need to be X amount of distance from something in particular um, and then as you start pulling the road around everything else will follow so we're gonna go now this time go a free curve fillet between two entities through point grab my first entity in a second entity and now we can start telling it where to put the point if you notice here I'm wheeling out it's gonna find it for me where to put that so if I click that it's done that one more time I'll do one more of those and see how that goes I'm gonna wheel in wheel out that again is putting it a floating curve between two entities through point we're gonna grab this entity here this entity there and you can see that it all of a sudden it's going to give me an option to kind of take that through a particular point. That's all there for this reason. You can then potentially go ahead and start dragging this around. And you notice there it's, it's showing where that point is. And it's going to keep that pass-through point there. So even though as it's pulling around the curve, doing some recalculations, and this probably might even have some issues when it comes across there, it will hold that pass-through point one more zoom in here and zoom out so if you've laid it out this way if you do have ahead go ahead and change this you can see it's going to tighten it up and force that curve change the calculations to go through that force point and I'm not sure what happens here we'll look at it if you go through here and get these curves to overlap but it probably gives you some sort of an error so right there you see one of the ways to go about using some of these tools um, you're as likely as not to go through eventually and also try to use, and you see me we're currently trying, and I'll try again here, this grid, where all of a sudden some of these, if depending how they're put in, you can go ahead and just change their length. So for instance, right here, if I double click on that, I can make that just 200 feet, and it will update everything. That's the tabular format. And if you notice again, I'll bring that up again. If you notice there with the right click, once you get that format we're going to grab on the alignment grab this method here and we can right click here and it gives me a list of other things I can kind of key in so it's telling me where my pass through points were and things like that so there's a lot of power right let's see the turn off the pass through point I might want to get some information on end point and start point of any given point you notice here it's listed as a list it looks like it's a two-dimensional let's see it should be a two-dimensional thing um, but you have that right click and point so you've got all kinds of constraints and things you can do uh, it looks like there's a couple three pass-through points so that's part of this ability um, of the dynamism of that and you'll see later that may pay off if you're really trying to tweak this thing out next semester um, but I would, I would really caution you to, um, to avoid some of that. One of the most important things, I think, for that will be to keep rows perpendicular as you're pulling them around. That, I can see some, some definite um, application there uh, in terms of keeping a strain of one thing being perpendicular to the other. And as of yet, I've yet to find that, but I'm sure that's there. You will note that these are actually these constraints are something that actually has been added to basic AutoCAD in 2010. So as you notice, some of you are I've been promoting changing your drafting styles there. You also want to start as you see something new come into a higher end product like Civil 3D. You want to look back to AutoCAD 2010 and to try to keep your basic AutoCAD skills, um, which is probably what would be tested on a WizKid test most of the time. Um, you want to keep those current as well. So I've got now my horizontal alignment in, and I'll show you some of the similarity of the, the vertical uh, in the next video. So mostly this is to start playing around with it, but remember, think it out in tangents and fillets in AutoCAD skills before you get too deep into playing with these tools on the horizontal. Thanks for listening.